Welcome to Continental High School, the site of this sectional final game between the Ottawa Glandorf Titans and the Continental Pirates. This is the first time ever. They only separate by 15 miles, folks, but this is the first time ever in the school's history this, these two teams get to play each other on the pitch. Welcome to WOSN. My name is Josh Crossgrove. I will be your play-by-play, -play. and alongside of me is Coach Toby Bidlack uh, for the first time ever here, and I'm going to turn it over to Coach Toby for the keys to the game. Keys to the game for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans is, first off, they've got to clean up their own simple mistakes. They want to el eliminate any turnovers that might lead to uh, quick counterattacks by this uh, Pirate offense. Secondly, they're going to need help from their leadership, their captains, Brody Karcher, uh, Jackson Harrison, and Tyler Hohenbrink to step up, make plays, keep the team unified um, no matter what the situation is, and keeping their shape during transition, both offensively, you know, transitioning from offense to defense and defense to offense. Those are uh, critical moments in, a, in any soccer game, and, and that's an emphasis there. And, of course, anybody that plays uh, the Continental Pirates, you've got to keep an eye on Ren Army. For the Pirates, keys, fast start through their pressure defense. All right, the Pirates like to get out there and make everything uncomfortable for you, and so they need that fast start using that pressure defense. Um, defensively, their defenders, they ask them to man mark, and so they've got to find those marks quickly and then uh, stay on those marks for the duration of the play. And then lastly, they've got to find offensive support for Ren Army. Uh, you know, everybody keys in on stopping him, and so it's going to be critical for guys like Braxton Stegbauer, Colin Davis, and Monty Rail in particular to step up and see if they can't find the back of the net. Yeah, that is exactly right. Toby, you know, every coach that's uh, ever played Continental this year has said, we got a man mark, Ren Army, know where he has. Folks, um, you're in for a treat with Ren. Uh, 110 goals, 57 assists on his career. So, folks, we will be right back. After this, we will have your starting lineups on WOSN. Welcome back to Continental High School, the site of the sectional final between the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Continental Pirates. Starting lineups here tonight for the visitors under head coach Kyle Metzger, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, they come in with an 8-7-1 and one record. In the goal here tonight is Dave Westrick. Then we have Jaden Oliver, a junior forward. Brody Karcher wearing number three. He's a senior. He plays in the midfield. Number four, Ross Mag. He's a sophomore. He's a defender. Number five, Cash Hireman. He's a senior. He plays in the midfield. Number six, Grady Steffen. He is a sophomore or a junior he's on the defense number seven Isaac Mackey he plays in the midfield he's also a junior number eight Caden Torres number he's a junior in the defense Jaden Kuhlman wears number 11 he's a sophomore Jackson Herringhouse a senior where he's 18 and Tyler Hohenbrink number 19 he is a junior and for the Continental Pirates as we get set for kickoff we will get the starting lineups here in a minute uh, but, Toby, like you said in the pregame, Continental needs a fast start here today. And they do have the wind at their back here in the first half, so uh, it's going to be real critical in that first half for the Pirates if they're going to have success in this game to hopefully jump out to that early lead uh, on there for them anyway. And, uh, um, you know, with the, when they have that advantage, knowing that Ottawa Glendorf is going to have that in the second half. Yep, and, you know, just by the sheer fact that uh, Continental has three freshmen uh, st starting here tonight um, gives OG just a little bit of an advantage. And one of the freshmen throwing the ball in is Brain Stegbauer, the coach's son. And it looks like we might have our first corner kick for the night. And uh, the uh, number 11 taking that corner kick is Ren Army, one of the senior starters, and also Connor Nip. He's in pink here for the keeper. And Army lines up the corner kick. Watch the runs on the from the 18 in. Looking for Carson Etter, number three, junior. Now Mason Rail, he's also a starter. He's also a junior. He wears number five. Throw into the Pirates. And uh, sophomore Colin Davis, number four, is going to take that throw in. Looking for Braxton Stegbauer, the oldest of Coach Brian Stegbauer's sons. He wears number 15 with a ball right now. Looking for a cross. A little too deep. Goal kick, says Mr. Sanderson. Our officials here today for this uh, 
sectional final. There's Scott Sanderson, your far side official, and Mr. Gilbert Burgay on your near side. First kick for Dave Westrick here. Looking for Torres. It's a nice kick against the wind. <laughs> yeah, he's a, well, he's he's a big, strong kid, so the wind's not going to affect him as much as you would think. And Army finds oh. his way. And a goal for Wren Army. Mark it down, one nothing on the H&K Family Auto Scoreboard. Scoreboard with 37.52, the Pirates up one nothing. We will be right back after this. Welcome back to Continental High School and on the H&K Family Auto Scoreboard. It's presented by H&K Family Auto with locations in Continental and Archbold and the best selection of trucks in the area. Good luck to all these teams. Toby, <laughs> Ren Army finds the back of the net and you said one of the keys to Kyle Metzger was we have to key on him. Yes, and uh, he just broke free and all he needs is a half a step and you can see there he got through, got between the, their center back and their outside back and once he's got just a a half a step on you, it's, it's trouble. It is trouble. And coming from a coaching standpoint, that's got to be very disheartening coming into the game, not two and a half minutes into the game, and you let the All-Stater break free. Yeah, 100%. I mean, he's the guy that uh, is in capital letters, size 36 font on the scouting <laughs> report, saying you have to stop this guy here. And like you said, two and a half minutes in, he finds a way to break, break in uh, into the box and get the first goal for the Pirates. And that was a bomb by... Senior Connor Nip, that's some of the great offense uh, to turn it from defense into offense back into the box. Looks like throw in for the Pirates. Good defensive effort there uh, to, to make that a throw in and not another corner kick. That was number two, Jaden Oliver, number four, Ross Mag on that defense. Bertie Karcher in there. You can see that pirate defense is making it very difficult for them to get the ball out. Once we get in that, once the you know the pirates get that in the ball in the attacking third, is uh, having a hard time getting it out. The defense for the Titans. Yep, that was uh, freshman Reddick Bowers, number 14, to take that uh, pass. Somewhat of a shot on goal. It was on frame. Uh, easy save for Dave Westrick, the keeper. Mason Rail up to Jonathan Etter. Two Etters on the team. Distant relatives. Ottawa Glendorf does have some size, and you wonder if that physicality, you know, that size, that will start to wear down the Pirates as the game goes on. That is one thing that Coach Stegbauer and I did talk about a little bit is their size. Um, they do have a little, a little bit bigger size, especially comparing our defense to their outside mids um, with Herringhouse and Hohenbrink. Cross by Monty Rail. Reddick Bowers off the crossbar. Still that loose. That was John Etter, actually. John Etter. I'm sorry. He was left-footed, so was Reddick. Army. Little high. Little crossover step, left-footed. But you can see that he's got some power in those legs. Goal kick coming up for the Ottawa Glandorf Titans. And Dave Westrick's going to kick into the wind again. Looking for Cash Hireman. Cleared out by Carson Etter. Trying to save by Caden Torres. You know, I've had officiated Ottawa Glender for a couple times, and I'm really impressed with Caden Torres on the, on the outside defender. He man marks his man well coming down that opposite side. So that is something to be aware of from a coaching standpoint, maybe go away from him a little bit. And if, if he is a, a great man marker, might the adjustment be if they, you know, kind of adjust their shape and have him uh, slide on the Red Army and just follow him wherever he goes? That is another possibility. Reddick Bowers takes it away in the midfield, looking for Colin Davis. Stolen by Jaden Oliver. Back pass back to Tyler Hohenbrink. Sent up the field by Ross Mag. That's Caden Torres. You can see the wind, like you said, Toby. That wind's going to play funny tricks on that ball if you get it up anywhere 10 feet above the plane surface here today. 
And with the Ottawa Glendorf going against the wind right now, one of the things they have to do is keep that ball low, keep it on the ground uh, here in the first half. And I mean, that's some of their issues while they're having trouble controlling the uh, ball between the wind and the pressure defense of the Continental Pirates. Yeah, foul goes against freshman Bain Stegbauer. Ottawa Glendorf looking for an attack. Karcher, back to Karcher. And he sails it across almost over into Lakeland. And the first goal kick for Connor Nip Williams. See how far this one goes into the wind, or with the wind, I should say. He kept it low, but <laughs> once again, it made it all the way back to <laughs> We're Dave Westrick. <laughs> no, no, no shot for Connor on that one. Dave Westrick with the punt. Edder tries to play it. That's Jonathan Edder. Mason Rail. Edder lets it ride off the foot of Oliver. Mason with the throw. Mason Rail with the throw. Looking for Bain Stegbauer. Taken away by number six, Grady Steffen, who has got ties to Continental with his mother being a teacher over in the elementary, Toby. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what a beautiful day it is for uh, soccer. I mean, uh, the Continental had to play the sectional semifinal game on Wednesday, and uh, those conditions on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday were not ideal for outdoor activity. No, no. This, it's, it's amazing that this is the weather you had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was what you're kind of expecting more toward the middle to end of October. But something to be thought of is – Connor Nip Williams takes that uh, kick from a back pass from Army that it just now landed uh, at the fence. So one thing to be aware of, if you're going to try and turn that defense into offense, especially here in the first half with 31:47 to go on the Agent K family scoreboard, is you're going to have to keep it low and fine feet instead of just bombing it because it's going to go right out of bounds. That is correct. Westrick. You can see that kind of just floats halfway. Once it gets up so far, it just kind of dies and floats. Here's an opportunity for OG. Defense, Peyton Wilson recovers. Mag. You can see Ottawa Glenor for applying a little bit of that defensive pressure for themselves and creating a little offense out of that. Oliver to Stefan. Stefan passes it all the way back into their defensive half. Looking for Torres. Reset the offense, looking for, oh, Torres is going to take it. One more step. Out of bounds, throw in to the Pirates. Carson Edder takes that. Tries to find Monty Rail. Braxton Stegbauer off his head, right to the foot of number 11 and Jaden Kuhlman. But the Pirates take it back. Off the, on the foot of Army. Army was looking for Bain Stegbauer. A little miscommunication there. Peyton, Jaden. <laughs> Peyton Wilson gets the better of Jaden Oliver. Jonathan Etter with a little move there. Find an Army in the middle. Toby, one thing about Red Army, 57 assists. He is going to look to pass as much as he looks to shoot. So as a player, you're going to need to be aware of where he's at, both with the ball on his foot offensively and, you know, looking to create the offense. Foul on Monty Rail there as he went to go after the ball in the box and uh, him and the OG player, I can't see who it is, but they got tangled up literally right on the penalty spot. And he is holding his head. And we will take a quick break here at WOSN. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Continental High School, and Caden Torres gets helped off the field. I think he just got a little shaken up. Looks like uh, he'll, he walked off under his own power, so that's a good sign. And we're back to action, and Ren Army looking for Bain Stegbauer. Bain off of number nine, Austin Hovist, who came in for Caden Torres. First action of the night. 
for Austin Hovist. Monty Rail gets a shot. Does not touch anybody, so it's off of his foot outside on the left side of the goal for a goal kick. Goes to Dave Westrick. With 29-15 to go, the Pirates with an early lead on the H&K Family Auto scoreboard here this afternoon. Westrick finds Army's head. Hohenbrink over to Hovist. Hovist up the field. Another foul by Bain Stegbauer. That's Bain's second of the evening, or the this afternoon, I guess. And that went, he uh, ran into the back of Isaac Mackey. Free kick for the Ottawa Glander of Titans and going to be taken by number three, Brody Karcher, the senior midfielder. Anytime you can get a chance to serve that ball into the box, that creates a dangerous situation. Goalie's got to make decisions. Defenders got to make decisions uh, from a defensive standpoint. Offensively, you just need you know, something to go your way, ping it off the uh, side of your kneecap or something like yeah. that and go in there. So that's a dangerous area to, to commit a foul. Yeah, any, anything, especially at the men's, 30, 35 yards in, in is a dangerous situation. We saw that, that Connor had to make a um, nice save. And you see B Braxton Stegbauer making a run, finding Monty Rail. Monty Rail. Dave Hovis picks it up. But something to be aware of, Toby, on that back end was Mason Rail and number 18, Jackson Herringhouse, kind of got tangled up in the box as well. Yes, I saw that. So something to be aware of. Unfortunately, soccer is a tenacious game of young adults that sometimes they don't like each other. Yeah. So that's something to be aware of. And well, it's getting a little bit more physical out there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And a situation like that could have resulted in a penalty kick potentially. You know, So you got to be careful if you're a pirate uh, right. not to commit anything in that regard. And, of course, OG, if they can create those situations and generate a penalty kick for themselves – uh, that would be a tremendous advantage for him. And that's how you could get an equalizer here with 27.05 to go in the first half. Still one nothing. the Pirates. Army in intercepts that pass, trying to take on three defenders. Slides a pass, looking for Monty Rail, but cleared out by Ross Mag. You know, piggyback when we were just talking about it, if OG can keep this a 1-0 game, at halftime, knowing that they've got the win the second half, they'd have to feel okay about that situation. I mean, ideally, yeah, you'd like to be at least tied, if not ahead. But, sure. you know, given this situation here, uh, an early goal, if they can hold it to that and have a chance the second half with the wind, uh, you know, they they got to like their chances in that situation. And that's one thing, you know, we do a lot of basketball together um, for Continental High School, and you don't, have to, you don't have to factor the wind in. Outdoor sports, football, soccer, Baseball, softball, even track and field, yeah. you have the wind to contend with. Yeah. So in, as nice as it is out there, uh, it, is, it is something to, you know, as a coach, you look, which, which direction? If we win the toss, what do we want to do? Do we want to take the ball or do we want to take the wind? Army. Sliding it up to Braxton Stegbauer. Braxton with a shot off the left foot just over the crossbar. Dave Hovis will pick up another one. They're keeping him busy back there uh, with the goal kicks. Yeah, that's our well, that's our fifth. Uh, the that's the fifth shot for the Continental Pirates here. But we've only uh, Pirates have only had that one on frame, which is Ren's goal. I guess John Edders literally hit the frame. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Looks like blue throw in. Jonathan Edder is going to take that throw in. And one nice thing about the Ottawa Glendorf defense, since that first two and a half minutes, they've really keyed in on collapsing on the ball. Whether it was Army or Braxton Stegbauer or Bain Stegbauer, whoever had the ball, they are very good at collapsing on the ball right now. Right there's your point in action. Yep. Army looking for a shot. Cuts it back. Two for Ren Army. 24-44 to go in the first half, and we will be right back on WOSN.
Welcome back to Continental High School. You're watching soccer on WOSN, the sectional final here at Continental High School between these aforementioned Continental Pirates and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. The Pirates take a 2-0 lead on Ren Army's second goal at 24-44. Doby, during the break, you said you made a good point. I'm going to let you have that one. Ottawa Glendorf had a, a lot of people around the ball here in this uh, our left side of the box and uh, you know tried to clear it out. It got to Ren. Army, he made a slight touch to the right-hand side, and once he got a half step on that defender, that's all he needed. He was able to turn the corner, got a sharp cut back, and put that thing in the back of the net with his left foot. And, you know, one of those shots you have to – sometimes you just got to give it to the kid because Westrick didn't even move. He had, yeah. he didn't even have a chance. I mean, it's unfortunate, but, I mean, there's, one, there's a reason why, and that's a shot over the goal by sophomore Colin Davis. Um – but just to finish that thought was, you know, he, that was one of the keys. Mm -hmm. Key on Ren. Yes. Yeah. Key on Ren. And that's what, that's exactly the email that we got from from the coaches is, I have to key on Ren Army. Yeah. And on the flip side, uh, we said Ren Army is going to need some support. Well, as of right now, no. Just get him <laughs> the ball and get out of his way. <laughs> yeah, he has got 110 goals coming into the game. It's 112 right now. Peyton Wilson looks for Ren Army. And you can see the Pirates offense and the defense kind of runs right through Ren. You know, he creates. He has the freedom to basically roam just about anywhere he wants. They've kind of set up, it looks like, their system that he's got freedom and they've got coverage for, you know, if he leaves the middle, somebody's there. Usually Braxton Stegbauer is there, you know, and sometimes he's able to get forward. Pirates normally play a two-forward uh, front. Here, but with that liberty, there's time that Ren makes that a three forward front. Yep. Throw in for the Otto Glendorf Titans is Jackson Herringhouse. Throws it to the middle of the field. That's like a corner kick as far as uh, Herringhouse can throw yeah. that ball. Yeah. Pirates, that, that could be something that the Titans look to utilize in that second half when they have the win. They get it down there and they're able to get throw ins uh, near that penalty box area. They're basically, they're going to be getting a corner kick, a free corner kick out of that every time. Yeah, and that that's something to, you know, that, that's a blessing to have as a coach to be able to throw it that far because there's not many kids out there that can do that. And once again, Connor Nip Williams sends it all the way back to Dave Westrick. And Dave Westrick's going to roll it out this time instead of punt it. Start the offense that way. Look to switch the field. Mag over to Stefan. Back to Mag. Hovist guarded by Army. Ottawa Glendorf has had moments when they've been able to switch the point of, a of attack, but they have not been able to then penetrate out of that very well. Once it hits uh, about 10 yards across the midline, Pirates generally have a wall kind of set up there, and it's been difficult for the most part for Ottawa to get past that or get much action, at least controlling the ball um, once they get in about 40 yards out from goal. Yeah, two subs coming in for Ottawa Glandorf. Two starters coming back in. Jaden Oliver coming back in, and you know it's nice to see Caden Torres back on the pitch. So obviously just shaking up a little bit. Um, but he's back out there on the pitch on the far side. So it's good to see that it was nothing serious. Oliver back to Kuhlman. Kuhlman drops it back to Hohenbrink. Over to Torres. Uh-oh. <laughs> that uh, Jackson Herringhouse got pushed in the back and the play developed and he took a ball right off the face. That cannot feel good. At least it's not like you said Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday because that would have stung a whole lot worse. Yeah, that one would have stuck with you for a little bit. Yeah, and uh, Connor, this, Connor this Nip. Is a shot, a shot attempt <laughs> right here? Yeah, well, Connor Nip Williams coming 45 yards off the pitch. He just kind of lobs it up there looking for Monty Rail. Brought out the pitching wedge instead. Yes, so Monty heads it out deep into the far side. Throw in. Stegbauer, or no, that's Carson Edder elevates to get that. Herringhouse 
battling with Monty Rail. Two guys down, two guys up, no call. I think there was two fouls there, one on each player, and they just let it play on. Yeah, that, you just that, that's one thing that people don't understand in soccer. It, there's a lot of play on. It and like it looks penalty like penalty kick. kick. Mr. Sanderson stops the clock with 19.35 to go in the first half with the Continental Pirates up on the H&K Family Auto scoreboard and taking the penalty kick. And <laughs> Dave Westrick just turns around and looks to the north. Um, you can tell he is not happy right now with his teammates. And Ren Army is going to take this penalty kick. I mean, Dave Westrick's an intimidating presence between the pipes, though, Toby. It's not a for-sure thing. Yeah, he's a good-sized kid in there. and uh, uh, Yeah, it's not going to be an easy attempt. Ren Army going for his hat trick. Not sure what the delay is here, but yeah. Sanderson with the whistle. He sails it just outside of the crossbar. He went upper 90. And, you know, that's a good – you can't go low. Right. On, a, on a kid that's six foot four. you can't go low. You have to go upper 90 and high. I mean, it was a great position just three, four inches outside. It's a good, solid strike by the senior. Ottawa Glendorf dodged a bullet there. And when you talk about the situation that they are going to have the wind in the second half, well, here they come on a counterattack. And that was one of them – Harringhouse, Harringhaus just kind of flubbed uh, Carson Etter, another a decent human being. <laughs> he's yeah. a big boy. Yeah, you know yeah. he's probably one of the most athletic kids out there on the on the pitch for Continental, um, and he just kind of shoved him off like a fly. Yeah. But uh, going back to what I was saying there before that play developed is you know the Pirates have the win here this first half, and. You know, you don't want to sit here and sit on a, a two-goal lead when you have a chance to get a three-goal lead. You don't want to sit on a three-goal lead if you have a chance to get four. I mean, right. you know, because you just have no idea what the next 40 minutes are going to bring in that second half when Ottawa Glendorf is able to have the wind at their back and what they might be able to generate. Yeah, and, you know, we were talking before the game. Ottawa Glendorf comes in at 8-7-1. Um, and, one, and uh, you know, there's some common opponents on there. Um, but OG plays, even though they're in – Division three this year, OG plays in the WBL. Right. The only other team that uh, Continental plays that's in the WBL is Lima Bath, which is another smaller division or a smaller school in the WBL. So, you know, when you come in playing in the WBL and you, you play Kenton, you play Elida, you play Shawnee, you play St. Mary's, you're tournament tested. Yeah. When yeah. you come into Division three. So I would not count the OG Titans out. At all. No, no, this is certainly not the first time that they've, they've been uh, faced a 2-0 deficit. And, you know, they, they've got some experience in this situation with the, their strength of schedule. And, yeah, they're going to have they're gonna have some answers. Army looking to go baseline. Tries to get it off of the defender right into the hands of Dave Westrick. And Dave. And, uh. Jonathan Etter just gets a little bit too physical there. Fourth foul committed by the Pirates. I mean, even though, I mean, there's been fouls both ways. It hasn't been, it's been an intense ball game, but not dirty. Hohen Brink sends it deep. Looking for Mackey, but. Cole English cleared that one out. Cole seeing first action here th tonight. He's another freshman on the far side. He wears number 21. Bain Stegbauer keeps it in play, finds Torres. Off the ricochet, Colin Davis is looking for some answers. Mag back to Davis. Davis and Mag are going to battle down there in the far corner. They're still battling. And Sanderson says, goal kick. Could have, that was a potential, could have been another penalty kick. Yeah, or it was, looked like it might have been just outside the box if there was a foul that happened. Um, but sometimes you just, you know, live to fight another day and go with the penalty, or go with the, 
Goal kick. Let some subs come in. Westrick overshoots both of the players. Stegbauer takes it. He's got some speed. Still bouncing around. In <laughs> That's the thing about soccer. Sometimes it, the ball just bounces everywhere inside the 18. Army. There were some calls for a handball there, but I did not see that I did myself. Not, I did not see it either. Ottawa Glander throw goes to Jackson Herring House. Another throw. Man, it would be a great thing to have as a coach. <laughs> Kid can throw 20, 30 yards just standing there. Oliver. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's number 13, Gavin Mormon in. That's Karcher. Saved by Connor Nip. Not really a shot on goal, but he come out as aggressive. Not as aggressive as the LCC um, <laughs> goalkeeper who was playing 35 yards off the goal line the other night. Yeah. And it, he's done that all year. Yeah. You know, I've had a couple of those games, and we've, you know, uh, just watching them. He, whatever. It, it, I guess that's how you coach, but. Aggressive play there by uh, Tyler Hill and right in the middle of the field. Getting the ball down the flank. Peyton Wilson and Mackey going at it over there. And Looks like Sanderson is saying that Peyton. Wilson might be a little too handsy. Oh. Just outside the box. Great opportunity for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans here to try to get one back. With 14.05 left on the H&K uh, Family Auto scoreboard, it's 2 nothing, Pirates. And we talked about this about 20 minutes ago, Toby. 20 yards out is very dangerous. It's, Bacon oh. saved by Mason Rail. So <laughs> we talked about how dangerous that can be, and that almost got extremely dangerous. Talk about the ricochet off of a knee, off of a leg. And that's what happened. Uh, Continental keeper Connor Nip Williams went one way and it ricocheted. Mason Rail was there off the post, and Connor w was just able to reach out his big paw and grab it, mm -hmm. keep it at a two nothing lead. The uh, defenders for a goalkeeper are like those offensive linemen, you know, to a quarterback here. It's, you take yep. them out, you buy them the stakes or whatever you got to do to keep those boys happy. And right there, it paid off in uh, Mason Rail stepping up and making a play to keep the Pirates, uh, keep the shutout alive for the Pirates. Ross Mag in the deep part of the pitch, the far north side. And that's Carson Edder coming up. Yeah. Carson that's Edder's had a couple plays between. I mean, he's elevated well to, to head the ball. Uh, he's had a couple plays here tackling the ball. That one right there to, to get the ball back for the Pirates and to generate a foul in a situation where the Pirates are going to have an opportunity to serve a ball into the box. Yep. Looks like uh, Bain Stegbauer is placing the ball. Looks like he's the one that's going to serve up the ball into inside the 18. And aggressive. Oh, Braxton that is a goal. You know, you can't fault Dave Wester coming out, but it just bounced off his hands and it fell right to the foot of Braxton Stegbauer for a 3 0 lead with 12.22 to go in our first half on the HK. Family Auto Scoreboard. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Continental High School, the site of the sectional final between Ottawa Glandorf Titans and the Continental Pirates. The Continental Pirates just took a 3-0 lead with 12.22 to go in the first half with Braxton Stegbauer finding that. And, Toby, you said getting that third goal is huge, especially when they're going to get the wind in the, second in the second half. And they're coming back, counter attack. I don't know if this might be one of their best opportunities, and they just lost it right there at the top of the 18. 
comes back to the pirate goal, getting out, drawing a foul and having an opportunity to serve the ball into the box. And, you know, we saw it just a, a few what, minute prior to this where uh, Ottawa Glendorf had a chance to do that and just about created a goal themselves. And in a similar situation, ball got kind of pinged around a little bit there. And uh, for the Pirates on that one, they were able to get their foot on it and, and knock it into the back of the net. Um, and on the other end, OG, just like I said, a minute prior to that, wasn't quite able to make that happen. I'm not exactly sure just what happened over there. There was a foul. It might have been on Carson. Carson, I'm not sure. The one thing with soccer officiating that, you know, with basketball, you get hand signals. You just point. You know, so you don't really understand what exactly happened, but uh, Ottawa Glenn gets a kick. So, and with the win, this could be dangerous as they serve it up. Connor Nip Williams comes out. 17 yards out and makes a run and a roll to Army. And this is how they want to start their offense. Good challenge. Turnover by the Pirates. And this is Hohenbrink. Or I'm sorry, Herringhouse. And he's talking to the official, and the official's not really having any of it. I didn't really see any contact there. I think it was just his reaction, frustration with himself. And missing that shot or not having a better attempt at it. Is, I really think that's what it mainly was. Not sure exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> right. Up here in the booth, you don't hear all that. So, Army. And that is Mormon. Mormon's going to get it back. Running the near side. Guarded by Etter. Serves it ahead, runs on to it. Still in bounds, on the line. Yeah, right in that line. And it is cleared out by Peyton Wilson. And looks like we're going to sub. Carson Kimmel, I think, coming in. Number 14, Carson Kimmel. And coming back in is uh, Colin Davis. So the lone freshman on... Ottawa Glendorf's um, roster is Carson Kimmel. And, Toby, you had an opportunity to coach him in club this uh, past spring. Yes, that's correct. Carson, uh, you know, fine, very fast player, fine dribbler of the ball and, and can finish. So we'll see if he can help the Titans' uh, fortunes here uh, late in this first half. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's a, a very good offensive player, like you said, and, and he's very fast. And we'll see is a deep throw in. And that goes to Kimmel's head and right into the breadbasket of Connor Nip Williams. So he found himself right in the middle of the action, not 30 seconds after he checked in. So <laughs> Nip with the boot. That's going to bounce. Oh, <laughs> what a play. Wow. By Colin Davis to get a little heel. <laughs> a little heel that. action, and Westrick had to dive for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, was... I think it was going to go far, far enough outside, but. Yeah. He doesn't know that. Right. You know, he's no, got to make a play. No. Yeah. So he, good, good he play. That chance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not down 3-0. So Army tries to slide it in there. Ottawa Glandorf. I think that was Ross Mag with the misdirection there. And Carson Kimmel down the far light, far side, out of bounds, off, off of the boot of Peyton Wilson. And Jackson Herringhouse is going to throw it in again. Deep throw. And wreaking havoc right there was Cash Hireman. <laughs> number, he was a number five. He's also a senior. And that's what you do. You stand in front of the keeper. Right. You know. I look for that throw in to be a very lethal weapon for them in the second half when they're going to have the wind at their back. And I anticipate more throw ins in the attacking third area for Ottawa Glendorf. That could be a real weapon. I wouldn't be surprised if they generate uh, a goal or two off of that. Yeah, and, you know, that's something that uh, Coach Stegbauer is going to, ooh, right off the face again of Cash Hireman. But something that they're going to stress is, you know, as a coach, you want to try not to give up corner kicks. But when it gets a little helter-skelter out there, the best thing to do is just kick it out of bounds and live to fight another day. Mm -hmm. 
you might want a little you might want to try and clear it ahead out of bounds instead of just clearing it out of bounds. That's something that you know Coach Stegbauer might have to say to his kids because, like you said, that is a weapon mm -hmm. that you could use. And you're seeing more and more of that now with kids getting bigger and stronger and being able to throw it 35 yards. Right. Army, good Torres. play by Torres. He's impressive on that outside. You know, we'll see him on the near side in the next half. Jonathan Etter. Monty Rail. Colin Davis, back to Etter. Etter surveys. You back can hear him. <laughs> Coaches, quicker, quicker. And Army was looking for sophomore Colin Davis. And Ottawa Glander just gets their boot on it, gets a clear. And Etter's going to throw it in in front of the Pirate bench to Army. Army turns, gets by, hesitates, lifts it. Mason Rail sends it to the north side of the track. Over the crossbar. <laughs> it stayed inside the fence down there. Yeah, it, it did stay inside the fence. I mean, w, WOSN doesn't make it up here uh, very often, Toby, but um, this is a nice facility to watch soccer. Yeah, I can't complain about this view right here. No. Etter, left-footed, right to the breadbasket of Dave Westrick. The Pirates are keeping Westrick on his toes down there. 5.04 to go here in the first half. Westrick sends it. Sends it for Herringhouse, but just misplays it just a little bit. Army. Crossover step. Get it. Gets a rocket off. Herringhouse has to knock it down and regather. Fifth shot for Ren Army in his first half. He's connected on two of those. Got a foul on Reddick Bowers. If that's a foul on Gilbert Burgay saying a push, I think it was just good solid play by both individuals. So you're going to see, I think this is Stefan with the kick. Sends it into the box. Connor Nip Williams with a save. Sends it high. Off the head of Stefan, right back into the offensive attacking position of the Pirate, Pirate Ottawa Glander of Titans. Edder to Torres. Over to Karcher. Torres looking to send it in. Looks like Carson Kimmel slipped a little bit on the pitch. Yeah, opened it up for uh, Pirates to make a play onto that. Monty Rail takes it. Nobody stepped up yet. Slides it over to Army. And Mag gets his foot in there. Steg what? Stegbauer in. What a battle there. Hireman. And uh, Hireman gets called for the infraction against Stegbauer. Those are two big boys going yes, at it. Yes, that was a. There's a lot of muscle hitting each other right there, about to the center of the pitch. Yeah, a lot of muscle there. And Braxton Stegbauer lines it up, raises his hand, tells everybody he's going to send it in, lifts it. Ran Army slipped on that play. Yep. And Karcher brings it out. Kimmel, good step by Peyton Wilson. Peyton just, Peyton just could not get his hips around to keep the ball in play, but still a good. Good turn. Now we got two subs for White, one sub for Bain. Looks like Jaden Pitney was in for a little bit. So he is back out. Coach Stegbauer has pulled him out to talk to him. He's giving him some instruction. Whistle goes. Throw in Stefan to Herringhouse. Herring House, save, save again. Oh, my. Wow. Wow, those are two incredible saves by senior Connor Nip Williams. 
Folks, you are not wow. going to see some <laughs> better saves than that. Those are point-blank saves. It looked like Harryhouse and Nip may have had some words with each other. I don't know the, <laughs> what those might have been. <laughs> um, I think Connor said to him, ouch, and <laughs> Harryhouse said, nice save. Yeah. I think that's how that went. We'll go with the sportsmanship <laughs> yes. award yes. on that one. Because that's exactly what Connor Nip Williams was saying because those suckers hurt. Yeah. <laughs> those were yeah. coming off with some well, speed. And Harryhouse got to be thinking, what else do I have to do? Right. <laughs> he had point blank. Stick Bauer. Yes, they were. Oliver is chasing Stegbauer. Stegbauer into the box. Tries to find it. OG trying to clear it. They cleared it out for a continental throw in. Looks like Davis is going to take that over to Etter. Etter loses it. That's Mason Rail and Carson. Kimmel going at it up the field, and that was number 19. Tyler Hohenbrink just says, we'll, we'll play it again. Under a minute to play here in the first half. Reddick Bowers gets his foot on it and sends it to the back of the – and that one did make it out of the fence. But luckily we have some spectators watching that uh, – We'll go chase Allen down here with 22 seconds to go in the first half. Plays it short. Herring House. Stefan. Back to Hohenbrink. Nine, eight, seven, six, Monty Rail gets five, a boot on it, but four, Ross Mag eight, gets it. Throw into the Pirates. Zero. And that is going to do it for the first half here this afternoon in this Division Three sectional semifinal between the host Continental Pirates and your Ottawa Glandorf Titans on the HNK Family Auto scoreboard. It is 3-0 Continental. We will be back with second half action with Josh Crossgrove and Toby Bidlack on WOSN. Welcome back to Continental High School. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN, and you're looking at the number three Continental Soccer Club versus the number six out of Ottawa Glandorf Titan Soccer Club. And on the H&K Family Auto scoreboard, today's scoreboard is presented by H&K Family Auto with locations in Continental and Archibald and the best selection of trucks in the area. Good luck to all teams. It is a 3-0 Continental Pirate lead with all with all the goals coming um, in the first 20, 30 minutes of the half. Two to Army and one to uh, Braxton Stegbauer. Toby? Yes, uh, basically both plays by you know Ren Army, uh, good one-on-one -on -one plays. Uh, first one, he created a turnover, got it, got into the box and finished it off. Second one, he got the ball on the left side, made a great one-on-one -on -one play to finish it off. And then the third goal, Braxton, there was a free kick. Ball got pinged around. Next thing you know, Braxton ended up on the uh, end of it for the third goal for the Pirates. The Pirates have 12 shots in the first half, three goals, seven fouls, and four saves for Connor Nip Williams and a bacon save for Mason Rail. On the OG Titan side, five shots um, in the first half. Four fouls committed. Uh, they allowed the three goals and three saves by Dave Westreek here as we start the second half with OG at, with the wind at their back this half. And they're, they come out firing on all cylinders, you know, with some pressure. And you um, know with a Kyle Metzger coach team, he's got the kids fired up. Um, and you can tell in this first 30 seconds that uh, – they're wanting to ramp up the pressure here. Shot by number seven, Isaac Mackey, off the foot of Peyton Wilson. And Army sends it out of bounds just past midfield. Throw in by Stefan. You could tell the difference between the first half throw in by Stefan and the second half throw in it yeah. at least 10 yards longer. Pirates are having a hard time getting the ball out of their zone. Peyton Wilson again steps up off a shot by Jay Oliver. Cleared out by Stegbauer to Torres to Mackey. Over to Herringhouse. 
He sends it in, gets deflected. Now Army to Stegbauer, that's Bain Stegbauer, up the line to Monte Rail. Caden Torres, good defensive positioning on that, but it falls back to the Pirates. Back to Monte Rail. Monte looking for Bain. Torres. Good hard contact there, shoulder to shoulder. Bain Stegbauer gets knocked out of bounds by number 11, Jaden Kuhlman. Carson Edder throws it in, looking for Monty Rail. Stefan clears it all the way back to Connor Nip Williams, sends it back in, crosses the pitch, but out of bounds. Throw in Ottawa Glandorf Titans. Toby, one thing is they want to go fast. Right. They're not letting anybody set up. Right. I would say that that was the emphasis at halftime was, you know, we got the win now. We've got to maximize these 40 minutes. Being down 3 nothing. Mag back to Hohenbrink. Sent back in by, that is number six, Grady Steffen. Back to Connor Nip Williams. He hasn't picked it up. Now he does. Yeah. Was able to eat up an extra, what, three to five seconds here? Yeah. Every second counts if you got that 3-0 lead right now. Especially in tournament time. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to protect that lead at all cost. Because the last thing you want it to do is get into overtime where it's a golden goal. Or, you know, even though as exciting as PKs are, it's nerve-wracking for most everybody else in right. the stands. Well, the difference there, Nip just kind of Nip Williams had a punt there that uh, didn't quite make it to, to the mid uh, line and in the first half you sent it to the top of the penalty box the other end so you can see that that's about a 30 yard difference that that wind is providing um, on at least his initial punt here of the second half right and we'll see what his goal kicks does this is the first goal kick tries to keep it low good distance finds Davis Davis working finds Army cuts it back finds Monty Rail he finds the backside of the support post. Out of bounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if Coach Stegbauer would be happy about Wren giving up that potential shot opportunity there. No. no um, but then again, you know. You trust Wren, you, you Wren Army's dr judgment out there. You, you do. You just, you know, trust him almost blindly, especially when he's got 112 goals and 57 assists. And it's an offsides call on Monty Rail. Says he was... Off and came back on. I don't think he knows what he did. Yep. Um, There's that quick restart by OG. And the ball gets sent out of bounds. You can definitely tell in this first five minutes that they want to go fast. And this is a corner kick opportunity mm. for the Outer Glen of Titans. If I'm not mistaken, this is their first corner kick. First corner kick, really. We, and we had, had two early ones, I believe, and we... They haven't had one since, so. Nice save by Connor Nip Williams. Just puts his big paws out there. He's going to throw it, keep it on the ground. Right to OG. Army and Herringhouse battling. And Army did not agree with that call. And Herring House with the throw. Throws it all the way into the box. I think that went off of Peyton's head back to. And there was a battle between him and I believe Brody Karcher up top there. Yeah. So, but if it went off of Peyton's head, it is still a legal play. Punt out of bounds. Kuhlman, or I'm sorry, Mag. With a throw in. Herring House trying to stay with Army. Army finds Jonathan Etter streaking down the opposite side. Saved by Westrick. Westrick keeps it low. That's Jaden Oliver getting, and Jonathan Etter going at it. Jonathan Etter. 
Six the ball. Reddick Bowers comes up from behind to Army. Army looking for Monty Rail to Bain Stegbauer. Pressure by Kuhlman. Now we got the Pirates' third corner kick of the game with 33 13 to go here. It is still a 3 0 lead. And Toby, while they're setting up the corner kick, you know, the, the bottom half of the bracket is already set for, I think it's Wednesday night. Um, you're going to have Kaleida and Spencerville at Kaleida. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go forward. Just wide off of a pirate head. But Kaleida ends up edging out Lincoln View 1-0 with 10.46 to go in the first overtime off of a corner kick. So they squeak out a win. And Spencerville travels to Miller City and gets a win and shootout, 2-1. Uh, so uh, both those games were at noon today. So it's uh, – and Ottaville um, is playing uh, at 5 p.m. tonight, an hour late later start than us here this afternoon. And uh, Connor Nip Williams drops it to the turf and kicks it. Torres off of the side of his head. We might need to send some medical personnel in Miller City to check their heart rates out because on Thursday night, the girls against Ottaville went to a shootout. Yeah. And then here we are two days later, the boys shoot out. Unfortunately for Miller City fans, the result was not the same as what the girls had on Thursday night. Nope. That's going to be a good district. Uh, you, know, you know, most of these districts in this area, you know, it's teams you've seen before um, one way or the other. So... Um, in your case, the, the Pirates and the Titans are going to square off again on Tuesday night at 7.15 in Ottaville. Um, the OG Lady Titans and the Lady Pirates uh, that you coach are going to play on uh, Tuesday night over in Ottaville about 7.15. So, um, but you guys have played before. The men's side of it has not yeah, this played. Is this is the first game. time. So, um, And so far, 3 nothing with 31.03 to go. Uh, it's been a great match, and you see Army. Davis. Oh, Davis off of Westrick with 30-53 to go in the second half. The Pirates take a 4-0 lead on the H&K Family Auto Scoreboard, and we will take a quick break on WOSN. Welcome back to Continental High School, the site of the Division Three sectional final between your Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Continental Pirates. And uh, the Pirates take a 4 nothing lead off of a shot off of Colin Davis's right foot off of the keeper, Dave Westrick, and into the back of the net. And that was all set up by? Oh, Ren Army. Ren Army. <laughs> uh, as if the, the first time you've heard his name. Right? Yeah. And here comes Ren. And again. Great save. Great save by Westrick. That's reminiscent of uh, the Connor Nip um, Herringhouse saves in the yeah. first half. Yeah. So, I mean. The Pirates have done a good job here in the second half of using what I call an up, back, and through pattern. Get it to a, a forward. Pirates get it to a forward uh, on that goal right there. Went forward, laid off to Ren Army coming in. And then once the defense reacted to that, it created a little seam for him to slide the ball through for Colin Davis to get the goal. Yeah, and something you don't see when you're sitting down more level, but something up here, when you use that formation and that philosophy, the defense almost takes a half a second break. Yep. Like, oh, they relax, yep. and then they hit you with the counter punch. Right, they relax, and then when they come to, they always seem to be lunging forward, stepping forward, and you use that momentum against them, slide a little ball through there, and uh, create a great opportunity for Colin Davis. And another free kick, that was taken by number three, Brody Karcher. Another save for Connor Nip Williams, the senior goalkeeper. And he's limping just a little bit. Yeah, at the now. end of that play, an OG player was making an attempt at the ball. I think there was a little, little bit of contact there. Um, I don't think it was anything malicious. No, it was just the no. play 
the timing. So Yeah, could have stepped on his foot. Army lost it out of bounds. Etter elevates off of his noggin. And we're going to sub. We have a sub for the Ottawa Glandorf Titans. And coming out is Brody Karcher. And coming back in is senior midfielder Jackson Herringhouse, number 18. And taking the throw is sophomore Jaden Kuhlman looking for Herringhouse. The Pirates can't get out of their own way right there. Peyton and Reddick Bowers were uh, fighting over the ball and kicking it out of each other. And Herringhouse is going to throw into the box again. And Connor Nip Williams is just going to let that one ride out. In the scope of the game, that fourth goal is really a killer if you're an OG Titan fan. You know, 3 nothing. It's still a, a pretty big lead, but this first part here, they made a good push at it. Didn't have anything to show for it yet, but they were making a push at it. And then for the Pirates to get that fourth goal, that's a real – makes the hill that much steeper that they got to climb. Right. I was just thinking 3-0, I can climb that hill. 4-0, it seems like it that hill becomes a mountain, mm -hmm. you know, just mentally. And now you got to, you know, think – you know, OG's going to have to do anything. They're they're still playing fast. They're going to have to do everything in their power to get back in this game. And a long shot from Braxton Steckbauer. Easy save by Westrick. Westrick sends it back down into the attacking third. And <laughs> what Connor Nip Williams did to him in the first half, he just yeah. did to Connor. Return the favor. Return the favor. Westrick to uh, Connor. And sorry, Mr. Westrick, we're not giving you a shot for, on goal on that one. Mm -hmm. Monty Rail. From Ren Army. Looks to go to the goal line. Tries to cut it back. Davis reaches out. Back to rail. Herringhouse. Army. Surrounded by four white shirts. And just did not get enough on that. But... Folks, you, you see how talented Ren Army is when four white shirts takes him uh, and he takes him one-on-one -on -one and still gets a shot off. Yeah. You know, he's a once-in-a-generation talent here in Putnam County. And if this is the first time you've ever seen Ren Army play, it's uh, it's definitely a treat. Yeah, outside of the uh, missed penalty kick. Yeah, but, I mean, even when he missed that penalty kick, I mean, it still was a rocket. Right, right. You know, it's... Etter turns it over to Hohenbrink. Or no, that's Herringhouse. He gets by Army. And Carson Etter steps up, takes it from him. Monty Rail to Bainstegbauer. Back to Monty. And he's on sides. He slides it over to Davis. Davis just did not get enough on that. And he... You know, he's you can tell frustrated with he's himself. frustrated with himself. The hands go above the head. He he's he's beating himself up over that one. Peyton Wilson takes on Cash Hireman, and the ball just goes off of Peyton's boot, and it looks like Jaden Oliver is going to throw that in. We got subs. Jaden Pitney coming in for the Pirates. And Austin Hovis for the, the Titans. And number 10, Jordan, Jordan Croy. Croy. I think this is Jordan's first action of the game. I don't remember seeing him in the first half, but I could be wrong. And it looks like uh, the Pirates, Jonathan Edder slips, and Jonathan might be hurt. Yeah, he is not getting up. He is, looks like maybe a cramp. Yeah, he is doing the cramp dance. And Scott Sanderson says, son, you need a sub. <laughs> Um, this is going to be a he's, – he's still got to – he stopped the clock. He should have to come out, but – Trainer never came trainer on. Trainer never came on, so they're letting him stay. With 24-39 on the HMK Auto scoreboard, 
We will take a quick break. The referees are having a little conversation. So we will be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Tournament Soccer here at Continental High School, Division Three sectional final between your Otto Glandorf Titans and the Continental Pirates. Corner kick shot off of the right foot of number 18, Jackson Herringhouse, into the mitt of Connor Nip Williams. There was a slight discussion by the two gentlemen wearing green. And we're, we're kind of figuring that it had to do with the clock being stopped and if the player had to come out or not. But you are correct, Toby. Um, from a coaching standpoint and from an officiating standpoint, from my side, is the trainer never entered the pitch, so he can stay. Yeah. Just because the clock stopped doesn't mean that he has to. It's up to the referee's discretion. But on that case, that was a good piece of officiating by um, both uh, Scott Sanderson and Gilbert Burgay to let Jonathan Edder stay in. So hopefully his legs are okay, not, not not any more cramps. And speaking of Jonathan Etter, he's got the ball looking for Bain Stegbauer in the middle. Bain looking for Wren all the way back to number four, Ross Mag. Mag sends it back into the attacking, looking for Hireman. Out of bounds, sub in for the Ottawa Glandorf Titans. After that first initial push by Ottawa Glendorf here in the second half, it's been pretty much even ball in the middle of the field uh, for the most part. And uh, the Pirates, it's kind of actually opened up that space behind the defense of OG and allowed the Pirates to uh, create some dangerous situations. They've had one or two other opportunities besides the goal that they could have potentially scored on. Right. And here's another opportunity, Monty Rail. And Army was on sides, says Mr. Burgai, but the pass was just a little bit too far toward the net and saved by Dave Westrick. And back to Connor Nip Williams. Carson Edder, I'm not, I don't know, I should have kept track of how many headers he's had this game. He has elevated and, and got his head on the ball, I would say, on at least five or six um, you know, balls there, like that one there. He actually using his head as a as a defensive, you know, to, to break up the service in. That is, yep, and Army in the, the thick of things again, looking to create the offense, center of the field, finds Rail, Rail looking for help, guarded by Torres over to Braxton Stegbauer. Braxton with a shot, just wide. Dave Hovis lays out again. And coming back in for the Pirates is Colin Davis. And sitting down um, for a hydration break is Jonathan Etter. Mm -hmm. And two more subs to the line. We'll get Ottawa Glanorf will get an opportunity to sub again at the next appropriate time. But there's two subs in for them. Army shields Herringhouse. Herringhouse is chasing. Back to Stegbauer. Over to Bowers, to Davis. Bain Stegbauer comes out, loses it. Ross Mag sends it. Intercepted by Mason Rail. Now Continental, oh, taken away by Jackson Herringhouse, but given right back. But like you said, Toby, it's played right in, in the middle of the field here mm -hmm. the last 10 minutes or so. Army elevates this shot, keeps it inside the uh, stadium, but uh, it is a goal kick. And coming in is uh, Carson Kimmel. And it looks like number 12, Whoa. if... Uh, Anthony, Anthony Colley yeah. seeing his first action of the, the afternoon over there on the opposite side from where you're watching the game. 
Monty Rail, Jaden Pitney, little one two combination. Monty gets by Torres and uh, deflected off of Dave Westrick for a corner kick. Mm -hmm. Monty, that several times this uh, second half, Monty has played that ball out wide to this outside midfielder. Well, that time he read it well because they were cheating that turn. Had a lane on the inside, beat his defender on the inside, and got a great opportunity. This is a corner kick opportunity. Ren Army's going to take it. Everybody for the Pirates are going to start up toward the 18. Army's going to send it in. Finds Carson Edder's boot. Still knocked around, but comes out of there Gavin Mormon. Him and Jaden Pitney are going at it. And great play by number three, Brody Karcher, to kick it off of uh, Reddick Bowers' uh, shin guard there. Good hustle by Peyton Wilson to save a corner kick. Throw into the Otto Glendorf Titans. Another throw in. Again, Anthony Colley on the throw. Sends it in. Connor Nip williams Bottles it a little bit, regains control. Sends it across the field. <laughs> uh, Jaden Pitney thought it was going to be a little bit further ahead than that. And uh, just a little bit of a missed kick there. Jaden Pitney out of bounds. Pirates regain control. Stegbauer to Army. Army back to Stegbauer. A little bit behind Army. Mm -hmm. Finds its way all the way back to Connor Nip Williams. Toby, after that fourth goal, OG just kind of took it down a notch. They were playing yeah. real fast there to start that first or the first five, ten minutes of the second half here, but they've just kind of slowed down. And I think back to that hill versus a mountain mentality. Yeah. You know, three I can surmount, four I just don't know. Well, that last play where, where Connor Nip Williams kind of bobbled it and it bounced down, nobody from OG really gave it much of a challenge effort uh, there. I felt like in the first half, even the first part of the second half here, that, would have been, that was a different story when he bobbled. Mm -hmm. They were collapsing right away. Yeah. Not, not after that one. I noticed the same thing. Um, just – But these, you got to remember, these are high school kids. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you can coach them all year long, and still, sometimes it's the straw that breaks the camel's back, and it, that third goal or the fourth goal might be that. But you know, they haven't given up; they just yeah. haven't been playing as fast as they started this second half. Yeah. But then again, a lot of the play has been right in the middle of the, the midfield with a few little runs as we see Monty Rail just kicks it a little bit too far in front of him. And uh, number four, Ross Mag was able to clear it. A couple subs, Jonathan and Ed are coming back in for the Pirates. And that is... That Carson Seifer maybe? Or no, 25. 20, 20, 22. 22. Riley Hanneman. Hanneman. Hanneman is a sophomore defender. Good for... Kyle Metzger getting some of the younger kids in there, some tournament action. I mean, because that's what it – you got to get these kids some action. You got to build on your program. Monty Rails on sides, slides it over. Army just tries to get his foot on it, just does not succeed. But that was a great play. Yeah. Well, great, good job of Ren Army to hold possession while Monty Rail got back onside, and they basically set that play up. Played it through. Monty got in there, slid it across, and Ren got a shot off, but right at the keeper. Good save by Dave Westrick. Yep, that's he. He's he's played a whale of a game, even though he's down four nothing. It's been a whale of a game. Yeah. Well, I, and I told you that coming into the game that he's he's an extremely talented keeper, and he's only a a junior. Mm -hmm. So Kyle Metzger is going to have him again uh, next year, and that's a foul going against Monty Rail. Uh, Against, uh, I think it was against Braxton. Was it Braxton? Actually. Yeah. Um, I believe his first Gabe foul Tours. of the game, <laughs> which is crazy because Braxton's a pretty aggressive player. Yes. 
Mormon takes a shot. Connor Nip lays down on the ball. Waste a few more seconds. 14 of 53 to go on the H and K Family Auto scoreboard with locations in Continental and Archibald and the best selection of trucks in the Northwest Ohio area. And we want to thank them for sponsoring our scoreboard here this afternoon. And four nothing pirates on that H and K Family Auto scoreboard. Idle Glandorf taken. And good save by Peyton Wilson. Deep throw. Two subs for Otto Glandorf. One sub for the Pirates. Here comes Jackson Herringhouse with his throw here. He's kind of directing traffic. He's going to let her launch. Just got it in too deep towards the keeper, and Connor Nip Williams was able to make a play on that. Yeah, and one thing when you have the when your forwards are, you know, sub five ten when the keeper's six four, that's that's hard to go up and get that unless you know you have some serious elevation, you know. Mm -hmm. Good play to keep that in bounds by Kuhlman. Just loses it. Army finds Stegbauer on a run. Stegbauer slides it across, looking for Army, but good hustle play by Dave Kuhlman to come out to keep it a 4 nothing lead. Army and John Etter were both there. And we're... And this wind is just wreaking havoc on our on our two keepers. Yeah. You know, Connor Nip in the first half, and then, unfortunately, Dave Hovist in the second half. Um, you, it's hard to judge the wind and keep it. And you want to utilize it the best you can, but at the same time, you know, it's just turning into turnovers because you're just serving it all the way to the other end. Right. And Cotton will put a little pressure on. Jonathan Netter there, Colin Davis. But as, you know, that was uh, Ross Mag a little back pass to Dave Westrick, and mm -hmm. here comes Red Army as a keeper. You're thinking, why are you sending that back to me with Red Army in the box? Yeah, yeah. You know, unfortunately. He, he looked not as comfortable as he is, you know, because you cannot pick that up. Right, right. And when you got someone as, as fast as Ren closing down on you, your your time to make a decision is not much. No, no. And you, I, you've seen it. We've seen more goals off of back passes in the past year and a half, two years, than we have in a number of years. And here comes Otto Glandorf. Good step by Carson Etter to get back on defense. The defensive unit for the Pirates have been phenomenal. Mason Rail, Reddick Bowers, Carson Etter, Peyton Wilson in the back, and then with Connor as goalie. They've done a really good job of limiting Ottawa Glendorf's opportunities. Yeah, and, you know, they got some speed in the back, especially when they bring when Cobb brings uh, Carson Kimmel off the bench. Mm -hmm. You know, he's probably, you know, just as speedy as anybody else on that team. Yeah. And a shot goes wide. Two more subs coming in. And just to recap uh, what's going on in this bracket, in, in the upper bracket, Ottaville is playing Fort Jennings, who won in a shootout against uh, Temple Christian. That was a 9-seed um, Temple Christian and 11-seed Fort Jennings. The 11-seed got them. Um, so Ottaville and Fort Jennings and then Continental and Ottawa Glendorf looks like Continental is going to secure as we have Red Army one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And that is a hat trick for Mr. Army. And Toby, we will uh, finish up this uh, recap of the bracket um, as the P Continental Pirates go up 5 nothing with 10.25 to go on the H&K uh, Family Auto sco scoreboard. Um Looks like Continental is going to be playing uh, Wednesday night 
at uh, 5 o'clock in Kaleida. Um, and then on the bottom bracket, Kaleida punched their ticket to districts uh, with a 1-0 um, goal in overtime off of a corner kick with 10.46 to go in the first overtime. And then Spencerville upsets Miller City 2-1 to one in, in a shootout. So that's going to be your recap so far. What we have, we'll have three of the four teams um, for the at the end of you, but the Ottaville game is going on right now as we uh, broadcast this game. So, and Army picks up his third goal on that breakaway, and here he comes again. Once he received that pass, was one on one with that uh, single defender. It was a uh, problematic if you're that defender. And he he gets a little cramp. He's down. And Otto Glendorf sends it back in. That was Jaden Oliver. Wren just takes himself out of the play, which is smart. Now he can come back in. And that is a... Questionable play on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, he just kind of took Monty Rail out there at top of the key. So... Braxton Stegbauer back looking for Colin Davis. Colin lifts it. A little bit too far for Mon or for uh, Bain. Ball stays in. A little bit of a odd sequence there for the Pirates. A little helter skelter action. But but it just seems like this game, the Pirates have been able to make something out of those situations uh, quite frequently. Yeah. I mean, Any time those balls just pings around, they just seem to find a way to, to make a positive play out of it. Another save by Connor, and he's going to waste a few more seconds by going to the ground. And part of that is attributed to an All-State player. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, it, you know, when you talk about All-State players in any sport, whether it's baseball, he's a pitcher, he wants the ball. Basketball, the All-State player finds a way to score when your team needs it. And the same way with an All-State soccer player in Ren Army. He just finds a way to make it happen. And that's that's probably going to be a card on Braxton. That was a very hard challenge. Very hard challenge on Braxton or from behind. So Braxton's going to have to be subbed out there. And I don't, I don't think he was anything mal. I think he almost lost his balance there going at it a little bit. Um, but it was definitely a hard challenge from behind. Yeah, yeah. And you hate and I mean, I don't think I question the, the fact that there was a card. I mean, no, it, it no, was, it's. You know, but eight minutes left. Uh, it'll be, be interesting to see. I don't know if he'll risk bringing him back in when you're sitting on a yellow and you're up eight minutes to go, five nothing. Do you just sit it out the rest of the game? What would you do, Coach? Um, at this point in time, you're just trying to get the win. So I think myself, I'd probably, you know, unless something crazy happened, which I wouldn't anticipate, I'd probably just lean on the side of we're just going to keep you out the rest of the game so nothing, you know. N nothing stupid happens. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm not sure what that was, what Ottawa Glendorf kid <laughs> took a seat on um, – the back of uh, Peyton Wilson there, I think. I think it was Peyton. Yeah. Um, just took a seat right on his back. Yeah. So, Well, and, and, and my question I'll throw back at you, you know, you got a situation like this. Uh, as, a, as an official, is your, is your whistle, whistle a little quicker right now because you don't want anything to, to get out of hand, anybody get hurt or anything? Yeah, I mean, you, you don't really change the way you officiate, but you just you talk them out of stuff. Um, but also – you have to be a little bit more defiant on your whistles. Okay. You know, a little bit louder, a little bit longer, you know, as you're staying control of the game. You know, you don't want that one yellow card to lead to two, three, four yellow cards with seven minutes to go. And I think, you know, this crew can do that. Um And really, it wasn't a malicious thing. It, it's not like it's been going on all game. It was just it was just a happenstance, unfortunately. 
and that's a wide shot by Jackson Herringhouse. He's had some good opportunities. You know, look at that first half with a couple minutes to go. Yeah. He had the, those couple shots on goal. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, how different might the game play out if he's able to hit that and, and make it three to one? You know, at halftime for, for the Titans, uh, obviously we'll never know. But, right. you know, I think that's something you look back on. Like, you know, how might have things been different if, if this happens? Yep. So, I mean, that – just for instance there, mm -hmm. you know, contact was there. Mm -hmm. But Colin Davis was already going down a little bit. He was a little bit soft-footed, you know. But it was the right call. There was contact. There was a foul there. But is it a shorter whistle because you want to keep the game under control? And I would answer that yes. Okay. You know. Um, so we got Bain Stegbauer to line this kick up. Lofts it in. Looking for Army on the backside, but good, good response time by Dave Westrick to read that play perfectly. And Peyton Wilson – to Herringhouse. Herringhouse off of Reddick's chest. Reddick making a run off of the defensive end. Finding a freshman, Jaden Pitney. And Monty Rail is going to be offsides. And he's just going to let it ride. And I like that when an official will let that ride a little bit. Not stop the game. Herringhouse. Looking for Mormon. Or no, I'm sorry, that is Coolman. Out of bounds to the Pirates. Looks like it's going to be a throw in for Carson Etter. Finds Army. Looking for Rail. Rail with a pretty touch to the inside. Still keeps. Now he loses it. Up to Jaden Oliver. And Connor Nip's going to chase it back into the box and pick it up. With 4-12 to go here on the H&K Family Auto scoreboard, it's the Continental Pirates 5 and the Ottawa Glendorf Titans 0. And I think you are right, Toby. I don't think that Coach Stegbauer is going to risk losing a uh, midfielder for the districts, I think he's just – I think Braxton's probably done for the day. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I think it's probably the right call there. Like I said, unless something absolutely crazy were to happen, but uh, it does not appear to be the case. No. And Bra Braxton, I mean, he, he had a heck of a game, had the goal there. But just, you know, his, phys his strength and, and physical size uh, is something that was needed against this OG team who had some good size and physical players. Um, you know, and he was one of those players that was able to – battle and, and win a lot of balls for us uh, and create a lot of action through his dribbling. Yeah, and uh, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans are subbed a few more subs and a couple of kids we have not talked about yet. Carson Seifer, um, Sergio Quinoez, Riley Hahnemann, and Carter Vorst are all in playing here um, at this current time with 3.03 to go with the Pirates up 5 to nothing, And Looking to punch their a district opportunity for four straight years, yeah. four years in a row. Yeah, um, you know, with that one regional trip back in two thousand and twenty, the COVID year, the first time the Pirates have been out, got out of district, and you know, you think about what OG has done um, over their years. I mean, they've had a state run, they've had a couple, uh -huh. a bunch of regional runs. And Army just kicks it a little bit too far ahead. Yeah. So the number of regional runs for the Ottawa Glare of Titans. And, and the one thing with OG right now with their numbers the way they are, they bounce around between, yeah. you know, Division Two and Division III. Um, 2017 and 2018 was, was the last time they were in Division Three. Two minutes remaining. So... As you can hear, folks, two minutes remaining. Monty Rail slips. Oh. And he is down. He's, He's grabbing his knee. Is that a cramp? or? I'm hoping a cramp just for his. Yeah, it looks like it's below the knee. 
Um, Let's say he's not able to pull his toe back. It's just staying pointed. Yeah. And we're playing on until an opportunity. And Army. Army. Now he, now he blows it dead. And uh, I had this post in front of me. I, I, you had a better angle at that as me. Was Army offsides, Toby? Uh, not even close. I don't know what the issue. But the, I mean, the, the ball was kicked from way back. Yeah. And, and, was, and Army and ran. It looked like Army ran all the way onto it. Right. Right. Um, right. I don't. And, and I can't understand if you were to blow that dead because of an injured player when you had a goal scoring opportunity. I I guess at the end of the day it's five nothing. It doesn't it doesn't hurt anything. Yeah. And uh coming in for Monty Rail is a freshman, number seven, Jackson Bidlack. You know that kid, don't you? I met him once or twice. <laughs> and uh with uh one twenty five to go um here on WOSN just passed a note, it's Audeville five um, Fort Jennings, nothing at the half. So, folks, the way the bracket's probably going to shake out is Ottaville Continental. Um, and that was a game with yours truly and uh, Doug Jenkins back in September. And it was um, a one-to-one -one tie uh, with Colin Davis getting an equalizer in the second half. Um, and Doug Jenkins, even after the game, after we were done broadcasting, Toby says, man, I'd love to see this one run back. Yeah. I said, well, Doug, <laughs> you're not going to see it until district. So, um, Doug's going to get his wish. If he's, if, you know, if he wants to come watch that, his son's a goalkeeper for Liberty Benton, um, does a whale of a job. So, um, the only thing that's going to be decided here is the exact final score with 40 seconds to go on the H&K family scoreboard, and Ren's just kind of toying with it over there. Um, looks like it might stay 5 nothing. It looks like it's probably going to stay 5 nothing. Um, he's, uh, he's just kind of wasting time. We're down to 20 seconds, and uh, the Pirates are going to punch their ticket to the district semifinals at Kaleida. 5 o'clock early game on... Uh, Tuesday night, or I mean Wednesday night, the girls play Tuesday. Yes. So, well, the Ottawa Glandorf Titans will close out this campaign with an 8-8-1 eight, eight, and one record, and the Continental Pirates improve to 13-4 and 2. Toby, just to give you a few numbers um, before we do our – uh, post game, these Ottawa Glandorf seniors, they end up with a record of 38, 27, and 6 with 24 shutouts, and they scored 138 goals in their career. Not anything to be shabby about at all. But they do close out their season, and the Continental Pirates, these seniors, continue to add to their totals. They move on to a record of 54, 17, and 4 with 31 clean slates and 207 goals in this career. <laughs> so, Toby, give me your final thoughts before we do our postgame report. Well, I think at the end of the day, I mean, it was the Pirates' pressure defense all over the field. It, uh, Ottawa Glenorf just never had an opportunity to get comfortable with the ball. There was a, a little bit in the first half, some times in the first half where they were able to try to change the point of attack, but they weren't ever really able to penetrate out of it. And uh, they just couldn't, couldn't really generate a whole lot of clean shots outside of the Herringhouse um, opportunities there late in the first half. So I, I just can't say speak enough of the defensive pressure. and want to give credit anytime you get a shutout. Uh, it's a phenomenal effort by the uh, goalkeeper, um, which Connor Nip Williams had some great saves today. Mason Rail came up with that bacon save uh, in that first half off of that uh, free kick opportunity there. Um, but Carson Etter uh, won a number of uh, you know defensive uh, headers and such, so that was impressive. And, and Reddick Bowers was just all over the field. I mean, he was he's kind of the un unsung hero. Mm -hmm. Just anytime uh, play needed to be made in the middle of the field, it felt like you know he was in there right along with Braxton and Wren Army in the middle of the field. 
to make those plays. So I really think that, that the whole thing was set up by the defensive pressure of the Pirates um, throughout the duration of the match. Yeah, and, you know, the one thing that uh, Kyle Metzger said in uh, the email was, you know, we have to key on Ren Army. Yeah. He has three goals. Yeah, and an assist. And an assist and missed a penalty kick. Yeah. And the one thing that Coach Brian Stegbauer said in his um, email was, we have to start fast. Mm -hmm. Well, 37-52 into the game was a pretty fast start yeah. Yeah. Um, by any stretch of the imagination. So the Pirates are going to move on for the fourth year in a row to the district semifinals um, at Kaleida High School um, coming up on Wednesday at five o'clock for toby bidlack my color analyst i'm josh crossgrove we will be right back on wosn with our post-game interviews welcome back to continental high school the site of the division three sectional final with the uh, winning coach coach brian stegbauer uh, senior Ren Army and Connor Nip Williams, the goalkeeper. Coach, one thing you said uh, in the email to us was that you wanted to start early. Um, Thirty-seven fifty-two. Uh, was that quick enough for you? Yeah, yeah, that was definitely what we've been looking for. Um, we we've been preaching fast start, fast start, fast start again today. Uh, we said it and it worked out. Ren took it upon himself to to break down their defense quickly and uh, put one in the back of the net early. Yeah, and one thing that uh, Coach uh, Kyle Metzger said that uh, they needed to key in on uh, Wren Army. And, uh, you know, this is game 18 on the schedule, and I think probably every coach has said that. Um, Wren, I mean, how, what do you, what, how do you mentally prepare to come in? Because you know that every coach has that mentality of we're going to key on Wren to stop you. That's the goal. How do you mentally prepare to uh, make that a priority to find the ball and get to the back of the net? Uh, I just, I just come in. I came up earlier today and was putting up shots, and I was just visualizing the game before, and just, I don't know, I just go out there and play hard. That's what I can do, and if it comes, it comes. So, all right, and Connor Nip, um, another clean slate here today, a five nothing shutout. Um, tested a little bit, um, but there was a spot in the uh, toward the end of the first half where uh, the Herring House kid two point blank shots. And two, I mean, I don't know if you'll find better saves um, in your reaction time. Just was it complete reaction time? Did you read him? Did you watch something on film that was able to help with that? Uh, it was just mostly reaction times off the start. You see the ball come off the foot and try to make the best save possible. All right, guys. Hey, um, by the time this airs, you'll know who, who your um, finalist is uh, that you're going to be playing on um, Wednesday night. Um, there at Kaleida, you played the first game. It's probably going to be Ottaville. That was a game uh, broadcast back on uh, uh, September, um, and uh, Doug Jenkins and I had that, and uh, all of us said that uh, we wanted to see it run back, and we're going to get an opportunity. Uh, Coach, what do you, um, real quick, what the keys to Ottaville? It's, it's nothing new. I mean, you faced them how many times um, throughout your career, and plus with these seniors, you know, battling all the way down to third grade. Yeah, these guys know each other inside and out. Our coaching staffs know each other inside and out. It's it, there's no secrets across the board. Uh, we got to stop slog bomb and, and Mansfield. Um, and they they get our defense is solid. They've only given up man, less than ten goals all year. Uh, you know we see these guys. They they were kind enough to come over during our three v three for Wyatt Davis and, and bring multiple teams and bring their coaching staff. It's it's going to be a respected rivalry. But I'm I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Ren, what are you looking forward to most on Wednesday? I was playing hard and I'm just having fun, but it's just good comp competition and yep, just go out there and play hard. So that's same question for you, Connor. Same with him, working hard and play as hard as we can and hope to get the win. All right, guys, um, thank you. Congratulations on a five nothing shutout win to the Continental Pirates. And once again, you see uh, the Davis Strong T-shirts. So keep uh, the Davis family in your prayers for Josh Crossgrove um, and Toby Bidlack. Uh, good luck to the rest of the teams, and thank you for watching the broadcast on WOSN.